it is hard and there's a level of viciousness that I was not expecting. I was not inspe expecting the intensity of this experience. But this isn't supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. My father and this administration intends to be transformative. And we want to do big, bold things. And we're looking to change the status quo. So I didn't expect it to be easy. That was Ivanka Trump discussing the political climate since last fall's election. The viciousness does seem to be increasing. A New York production of Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar, features a Caesar modeled on President Trump. Spoiler alert, he does get stabbed to death halfway through the play, as he has for hundreds of years. That play was sponsored by Time Warner. That's the parent company of CNN. Fried Zakaria, who hosts a show on CNN on the weekends, tweeted this. If you're in New York, go see Julius Caesar free in Central Park, brilliantly interpreted for the Trump era. A masterpiece, he laughed, he cried. Well, fantasies about the violent death of the president seem to be a running theme at CNN these days. Just two weeks ago, Kathy Griffin, a CNN host at the time, she did the New Year's show, fantasized about beheading President Trump. What is going on over there? Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill, and he joins us tonight. So, Joe, I, I, is it wrong to connect the dots and, and see that this is a theme now? Oh, it's absolutely a theme, Tucker, because when you think about it, Time Warner obviously owns CNN, as you just mentioned. They had the Kathy Griffin situation just two weeks ago. They're forced to let her go 24 hours later. They also own HBO, Tucker. And Bill Maher, just 10 days ago, on that program, interviewing a Republican senator, said that he was a House N-word, and he had to apologize. HBO didn't suspend him. I don't quite know why, probably because there's no advertisers on HBO, so there was no threat of boycott. Uh, HBO also in 2012 featured a severed head on Game of Thrones of President Bush. Then you go to Reza Islan, who called the president a POS on Twitter. He said a lot worse on there. And CNN releases a statement saying that he's not an employee of the network, even though he hosts a show. So a week later, they were forced to fire their non-employee, and he's gone. So now Time Warner here, Tucker, has an opportunity to say we don't agree with any production that assassinates any president, Trump, Obama, Bush, it doesn't matter. And instead, they appear to be sticking by it, like the New York Times, who also sponsors Julius Caesar and Shakespeare in the Park and Central Park. And you know what CNN and New York Times have in common, Tucker? Harvard study about two weeks ago shows that CNN is number one in terms of negative coverage of Trump, 93% negative. New York Times is number three, 87% negative. So it shows me that they not only disagree with the president in terms of ideology and policy, but there is an actual vitriol and hatred there that then leads to them sponsoring events like a Julius Caesar and a Donald Trump getting stabbed to death by women and minorities. But why don't you say so? I mean, there's another cable channel that's pretty openly left. It's you know, the Leon Trotsky channel, and if you're into that, you can watch it. And I think they're pretty straightforward about who they are. And speaking for myself, I'm not, I'm not bothered by it because I don't feel misled. But if you have a channel that is always lecturing you about the primacy of news, news is a star, or about the news, and then they're pushing an uncloaked political agenda, ah, oh, there's something grating about that. Have they thought about just being who they are? No, CNN continues to insist that they are a nonpartisan network, that Fox is over here and MSNBC is over here, and they're here to give you the middle. And just the numbers just don't work out that way, Tucker. And if you remember a couple of years ago, there was uh, a clown that in Missouri that wore a mask of President Obama. This is in 2013, right. I think. And CNN was all over this story. A lot of media was all over it, to the point where not only does the clown get fired, and this clown wore masks of Reagan and Bush and Clinton in previous years. He's a veteran clown, apparently. But he was banned for life from the Missouri State Fair because of the media coverage, and it was so horrible that a clown wore a mask of a president when he's worn masks of other presidents before. It's crazy. Well, I do remember eight years of getting a lot of lectures about, you know, impugning the dignity of the office and belittling the guy and all this stuff, and you have to, even if you disagree, treat him with respect. No, it's kind of fine with me. Actually, I'm happy to treat the president with respect. He's the president. But whatever happened to that standard, it seems to have changed. It has, and it's ha even in the late night sphere as well, Tucker. Remember Stephen Colbert just a couple of weeks ago making a sexual joke about Putin and Trump. Bill Maher, I'll mention him again, and Bill's very straightforward about who he is, and I respect that. I think he makes yeah, a lot I of agree. good points. But he basically described uh, Ivanka Trump uh, performing a sex act on her father. So the bar just keeps getting lower and lower, and I think Kathy Griffin probably saw what those guys were doing and said, oh, I could hold up a beheaded uh, head of Trump because 
everybody's getting away with these deals, and nobody really seems to be objecting to it. So that's where we are now, Tucker. Just the bar is so low. And one more final point: Time Warner and AT&T are trying to complete a merger. That's nowhere near done. And the president did say on the campaign trail that he may try to block that. Matters like this certainly don't help. Yeah, you just sort of wonder what's going to happen when all this is over, when you know Trump is gone and there's a new president. Is anyone going to watch that channel? Will anyone believe them again? I mean, <laughs> Joe, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well,